and welcome to the podcast. Uh, it's another one of our specials uh, where we ask, uh, if you were stuck on a desert island, uh, of course you wouldn't eat the pig. Uh, what would you eat, though? What meals, foods, ingredients, snacks, whatever you want, uh, stuff to eat, would you take with you to a desert island? And my guest today is Matthew Pritchard. Um, he's a professional skateboarder stunt performer and celebrity chef. Uh, you'll remember him, I'm sure, from Dirty Sanchez, Wrecked and Balls of Steel, uh, or perhaps from the first ever BBC vegan cookery TV show, Dirty Vegan. Um, he's got two cookbooks, Dirty Vegan and Dirty Vegan, Another Bite. So here's how today works. You get to pick about half a dozen foods you love, and they can be full-blown dishes, they can be snacks, they can be ingredients, and you Tell me why you love them, and I will probably agree enthusiastically, unless it's okra or tempeh. Um, so, what do you want? What do you want to pick first? What do I want to pick first? Um, mushrooms. Mushrooms. Yeah. I mean, now I saw on Instagram you and Derek Sarno. Are you are you guys pretty no, tight? I, I, because no, he, never, he tagged you in a mushroomy post. I've never I've never met him, but I'm just. I thought I'd been following him for a while and I'm just really interested. I just find it quite fascinating the things that he does with mushrooms and stuff. And yeah. I actually want to, I want to get his book, his mushroom manifesto, I think it is. Yeah. I haven't got it yet, but I will definitely be getting it. And uh you know, he's he's, he's he's had these lion mane mushrooms and he turn, turns them into steaks. And I've always wanted to get these lion mane mushrooms. And uh Bude, a guy who owns Bude Mushroom Company. He just sent me a message. He said, oh, I'm passing through Cardiff um, on my way to Porth Court. He lives in, he used to live in Porth Court to see his parents. And he said, I've got some um, lion's mane mushrooms. Do you want them? I was like, whoa. You, you know, you can't get them in Tesco's or, no. or Waitrose or whatever. And uh, I was like, yeah, 100%. Uh, so I, went, I picked them up off him. <laughs> Christ. Was, this, was this like some sort of dodgy looking deal in a car park where oh, like... it, it, it looked waste it looked proper sketchy <laughs> like we pulled up the services I pulled up next to him gave me the goods and I <laughs> uh, you know when, they, they look weird they look fluffy and I showed because I brought them back and my um, my sister-in-law was in the house and she thought I was showing her like these baby rabbits and she went <laughs> she went what I thought they were rabbits, but not yeah. mushrooms. Yeah, I thought you were <laughs> vegan. She, she freaked out. But um, the app, this uh, massive, like a huge like beard. Oh, we're messing around with them anyway, but they're really fascinating, really dense, uh, fluffy on the outside, stinking yeah. mushrooms. And I just couldn't, yeah, she couldn't wait to get cooking with them. Last night was the first time I cooked with them, and they were absolutely amazing. What did you do with them? I made the uh, I made the steaks. I mean, there's a few things you can do with them, but I made the um, the lion's mane steaks. And I watched Derek Asano's uh, YouTube video on how we prepped them and all that kind of stuff first. And it's just yeah, the, 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 you know, you get you put them in, see it, see at the bottom, turn them over, see the other side, and then you get another pan, put them on top. The compression thing, looks, yeah. And just constantly, just keep doing it, keep doing it. And then the juices that come out of the mushrooms, they're quite, there's quite a lot of water in them. Mm -hmm. so, and then in, in the end, so you've just got these, got the steaks, stick them in the oven. And I used um, a Tubby Tom seasoning, which is like a garlic and some, some kind of garlic seasoning and stuff. And I know yeah. Dad can use barbecue. But I stuck them in the oven for 10 minutes, brought them out. Man, I, I cut through them. Delicious, absolutely. So I had steak, chips, and peas. Oh, sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Proper old yeah. school. Yeah, so there's, the, there's them and there's the, you know, the, the, the king oyster mushroom as well. Oh yeah! Now, have you have you done those? All of these things, I'm I'm sort of I'm I'm a proper kind of wallflower when it comes to the exotic mushrooms. I'm sort of standing at the side, waiting waiting to be asked, <laughs> and I kind of I mean, I, I'm too I, nervous I, to just go out there and you know. You have you have rich. I mean, the one which yeah, which is readily available is the chestnut mushroom. Love that. Love chestnut mushrooms. Just love the texture, the flavour, and that's what I use normally in most of my cooking. But then the King Oyster, Tesco's actually do King Oyster. I'm thinking about two or three of them. And it's just a lovely looking mushroom as well. Um, now the first, 
thing I ever did with the King Oyster Mushroom was when I, when I was filming Dirty Vegan and we made uh, mushlops and scallops out of mushrooms. And um, this is quite a few years ago. And yeah. we cut them, cut the stems to make them look like scallops. We soaked them in water for a bit and then we, um, then we shallow fried them. I turned them over and just until they were browned and and, and they tasted <laughs> the, the texture. Oh, obviously, the, we we put some uh, naughty seaweed in with it as well to give it that fishy fishy flavour. They were absolutely perfect. They were re- really nice. And I remember Derek Derek Sano then did them, and I was like, "No, I put mine in water." He said, "Oh, you don't need to put them in water." So the next time I did them, I did them without putting them in water, and I found them a bit. They they were a bit more meatier. Rather You're right, than, right. And then, but they were softened when you put them in water. Yeah. So, yeah, there's them. And I've actually seen online as well people doing calamari with uh, king oyster right. mushrooms. So they cut the stem uh-huh. and they cut them to the size of calamari. And then they'll put something in the middle to cut a hole through it. Amazing. And then, yeah, it's just mushrooms, man. It's just, they're, they're banging. You should try. <laughs> that. We, we did an episode uh, with Derek and Eugenia Bone. Uh, solely on mushrooms. Uh, that's it's well worth listening to. Some amazing stuff in there. Derek Sano is just uh, incredible with mushrooms. Um, oh, yeah, he, he, he knows he knows his mushrooms all right. I mean, yeah, the, the king oyster. Because I think with the lion's mane as well, you can make chicken nuggets out of them. That's sure. What do you? What I mean? Because you know, you're talking about like having your steak dinner last night and stuff. Because yeah. you've been vegan for is it about seventeen, eighteen years or something? Two thousand fifteen. Oh, sorry. Right. Okay, fine. What are the things that you miss the most? Uh, eggs. Mm. I mean, I don't, I, I'm not asked. I'm not really not asked about meat. I mean, when you when you start going vegan, you, you sort of think about it all the time. And then after a while, it's one of those things that just completely just goes off your radar. And, it's, and you don't really, I don't really care. Yeah, yeah. Really care for it milk as well which is you know you're so used to having milk but then your taste buds get used to oat milk which is my favorite and i don't really care about milk i just but there's one thing i don't really care about anything about my past life of eating uh, eating animal products apart from eggs i do love a hard boiled egg a hard boiled egg oh, yeah, yeah. A hard boiled egg. Or a, fry, a fried egg fried egg done properly though so many do so many people fry their eggs and they burn the outside and then make it crispy <laughs> you don't like that you want yeah. you want it soft and melty well i mean i would say that fried egg a sats fried egg technology is moving on every day you know we get closer every day it won't be long matt it's coming yeah it, no, it won't be long i mean the, the scrambled tofu is um it's pretty cool. I mean, I managed to get some black salt the other day from. <laughs> oh yeah, amazing! Home, home sense of all people of all. Oh, really? <laughs> I was literally in home sense with my fiance, just looking for bits to fill fill our house, and I thought, and they got all these bits of food, and I go, oh, they got black salt, and I was like, hey, so we're looking for this stuff, so we got black salt in the cupboard now for a tofu scramble to give it that eggy flavour. Yeah, amazing. Sulfur. It's worth, um, have you checked out uh, in Bristol the, oh God, what's it called? Um, I'm just looking for it. Um, but it's, 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 oh yeah, Kucha Metze Bar. It's yeah. worth having a look at their fried egg because I saw it on Instagram and I genuinely, I was, I was like, I thought this place was vegan. Like it's utterly convincing again and people are raving about it. Um she, uh, not has been another guest on on the podcast in the past. It's it's, it's worth checking out her fried egg. If, if you're if you're really jonesing for a fried egg, it might be worth making a pilgrimage to Bristol. It's not too far. I mean, it's only over the bridge for me. Any but vegan I'm... is going to do at least fifty miles for a really good burger or, or egg, aren't they? But I, Gaz Oakley, he did um, he did like a, a half you know, boiled egg cut in half. I guess for, for Wagamamas, he did that. Um, that yeah, dish. yeah. It was just no, I, I tasted it. It was, it was it didn't taste like egg, but you know that that, that texture and stuff was there. Was yeah, really yeah. We're getting there. Okay, so you got mushrooms, and that's a good call because that's a lot of different stuff in one hit. There. What do you want to have next? Um, vegan meats. Yeah. Now, 
I've been doing some, some stuff with Oomph recently and I'm just blown away by uh, how well they've managed to do the uh, the Donna meet. Mm. Like, honestly, man, it blew me away. <laughs> they gave me a bag of it because I was like, yeah, if I'm going to work with somebody, I want to taste the product first because I'm not going to advertise something that I don't really agree with and I don't like. Uh, sure. So they gave me some and so it's so easy to cook into the frying pan a little bit of water cook it all off warm it all up and it was i can't believe how real it is really yeah it's it's so good the, the texture it comes in the strips it actually looks like really it looks like somebody just peeled it off the dot the, the amazing on a leg and but you without that horrible greasy feeling in the back of your throat and that you know that you know that yeah 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 yeah, yeah. That, that don't have me but that that stuff is ace and it, it's a swedish company and they did um so i wanted, wanted to do a few things and i did a, did a don't meat pizza with it which is uh what, what they do but in sweden when they like everyone gets up and they want to have um some fast food they go for donna pizza donna so pizza that's food. genius it was ace it was banging <laughs> yeah it's processed yeah it's not not good for you but hey it was good well, that's the thing, isn't it? I, I, you know, so many people uh, make all these pronouncements about um, vegans. Oh, you know, a lot of vegan food is very processed. It's like, well, it hasn't got antibiotics in it. It hasn't got pus in it. I, you know, it hasn't got feces in it. Yeah, if I had to choose, eh, I'd eat the stuff that didn't have tumors in it. Yeah, and it's, I mean, they don't have to kill a slaughter, well, slaughter an animal in the process to get it either. Exactly. So uh, they, um, they also do a good. They they do a cracking meatball as well, and it's just yeah, yeah. There, there's some vegan meats which are a bit hit and miss, but the um stuff at the moment is absolutely. Was spot. that the one for you? Yeah, it is. Yeah, definitely. Nice. What about? Do you ever make your own seitan and stuff like that? I have to make my own seitan. Yeah. 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 Um, it's pretty. Uh, it's not that hard to make, really, is it? I mean, wheat glue. I mean, there's, there's a, a whole food a whole food shop uh, just down the road for me. It's been there since the eighties. I used to go there with my mum and dad because uh, my mum mum was pretty hippie-ish back in the day, and, and it's everything's. There's no, oh, how can I say it? You don't walk in. It's not. It's this five star place, and everything's sort of in like plastic bags and sure, weight. super. And nice. it's just the best shop ever. The guy running it, Gareth and his wife. Unfortunately, he lost. He's lost his wife recently. Uh, but they were just the, the best people. Made you feel really welcome. Independent business, just brilliant. And they've got like dates, nuts, all this kind of does stuff. It, does it have? Does it have that health food shop smell? Because yes, I love yeah. that smell, man. I love that is that is second only to the smell of a hardware store. <laughs> you know, those two shop smells are my favourites. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. As soon as you walk in, well, you can actually smell it from the outside. And you walk in, it's got that, and they've just got all the best produce. And I love going in there and spend, spending spending uh, there. Well, I could spend a fortune in there, but um, yeah. What was I? But the what? satan flower. So, yeah, that's it. And I, I said to him, I said, "Have you got any uh, wheat gluten?" And he went, no, I haven't. Well, I can get some infuse. We just got a load of wheat gluten in. And now he sells wheat gluten, so I buy it off him to make uh, to make Satan and stuff. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. It's, I, it's, I recommend there's uh, – I recently uh, sort of follow – I never really follow recipes. I suck. Uh, but um, Richard Fox – um, I don't know if you know him, but he's he's a he's a really great chef, and I, I followed his seitan recipe, and it's got a lot more elements in it um, than any recipe I'd used before. So you you use um, uh, TVP, you know, textured vegetable protein, the the sort of soya mincey kind of sausagey mix, right. and you make a mirepoix, which is like sweated carrots and onions and leeks and celery and stuff. You blend all of that, and then use that to make the dough. And it was the best seitan I've ever made. It's so dense. There's like no air pockets. Like it's just, it's just, ah, oh, it was, I had it for Christmas. It was amazing. How oh, do you put it, you, you, you put it in, in, in a wrap um, No. Uh, thing film for no, no. And, and poach it in water? Or? I, I did poach it. Yeah. I simmered it for like a, at least an hour, maybe a couple of hours. Yeah. Um, but I didn't, I didn't wrap it in anything and I left it overnight and it was just, I mean, it was just, you could, 
I don't know. It's got a nice little springy. Yeah, head, beautiful head kind of vulcanized it. rubber. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> through with it is quite satisfying. <laughs> it's like I love that you can sort of tear it, you know, and like follow the fibers of the gluten. It's like yeah. Get proper caveman on it. Anyway. Okay, so you got mushrooms. You got fake meats. Yeah. What are you having next? Uh, um. Let's talk about chocolate. Oh, let's. Vegan, vegan chocolate. Now I think. Before you know, before I went vegan, I absolutely loved chocolate. Right. And I thought. And what was your What was your favorite? Pre-vegan. And uh, well, I didn't think I could get my hands up, but the Cadbury's Cadbury's Dairy Milk Galaxy. I find Galaxy yeah. a bit more creamier than Dairy Milk, but sure. I but mean, they never let you down. These are rock solid. These two. I mean, Lint. I found was was the posh. Everybody loved Lint. Posh. Milk. Have you tried the new vegan Lint? No, I've seen it advertised, but I, I want to get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is it good? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I can't wait to try. I've seen it, and I'm like, damn, there's another one on the market. <laughs> I've got to get it. But it, it, I, when I, I thought, I'm, again, I'm not going to get the same kind of deal with chocolate, a vegan chocolate, as I did with the normal chocolate I used to use. But so I, I, went on, I went to vegan shops and stuff to try and find this chocolate which i could get and it, it, it was a it was a hard search because some of it was oh, somewhere it's hard going the vegan the vigo bar the vigo oh yeah 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 I really like that that's quite nice and that, yeah. that's when i first started looking for chocolate over all of them and then after years of searching, searching and, and i'm finding as the years go by the chocolate seems to start getting better and better and better no yeah i went for the galaxy one is absolutely brilliant. Uh huh. Yeah, the vegan galaxy. All of them over Christmas. The orange one is really good. The, the salted caramel is really good. They, they're all really good. And they seem to have that nice little um, chocolatey taste to them. But then for, for posh, I bought a posh box of chocolates at a health food shop. Booja Booja. In Freaks at Booja Booja. Yeah. Yeah, it was on a nice, it was in a nice box. It was great. Yeah. It was Christmas. I know I treat myself, but they were like truff, champagne truffles. Yeah, it? yeah, they're really good. Yeah, and then the Buja Buja ice cream as well. Bang in. It's really good, really good. I I think what's interesting is that with a lot of um, stuff, when you when you start as a vegan, you're looking for direct replacements. You know, things that taste exactly like the thing that you've just given up. And then as you sort of get further down the path of veganism, you actually start to sort of move away from that into stuff that is more, I'm going to say, like intrinsically vegan, by which I don't mean healthy. I just mean it's just its own thing. It stops being an exact replica. So I guess what I'd say is like, you know, you were talking about fake meats before. You know, there are some things that are, I, I, I tasted some fake tiger prawns. And they were too close. Oh, you, they you? were too close. And I couldn't actually handle how close they were. You know, and I've realized that as a vegan now, I don't want something that's got exactly the texture of meat because that's actually going to skeeze me out now. I'm so comfortable with vegan versions of meat that that's what I want. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so with chocolate, I totally hear you on the galaxy. It's fantastic. But have you tried because this is me and Ivana Lynch's absolute number one. Have you tried the Om bars? Om. Om. Om bars. Shall we meditate together? No, I don't think I have. You've got to try an Om bar. Now, yes. I would say that that is the same thing whereby it is not chocolate like Cadbury's dairy milk. It's its own chocolate and it's raw. Now, everything I'm saying, if I was hearing it, my eyes would be glazing and mentally I'd be leaving the room. I'd be like, whatever. But try it. It's so creamy and sweet and rich. It's the most amazing chocolate I've ever tasted. Hands down out of like dairy, non-dairy chocolate. It's just, it's got an amazing, but it's its own thing. I'm going to have to, I'm going to definitely have to try that. I mean, you, you know, that um, there's that Kinder Bieno. Oh, yeah, yeah. They've got a vegan The raw version. Halo. Is it Halo? That's, that's yeah. it. It's really good. That's it's really good. I mean, that's really good. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's, there's um, 
Oh, Mummy Megs as well. Mummy Megs does all those. Um, she does the the, the bars and the, the marshmallows and stuff. And wow, Christ, they're really good as well. Yeah. I, I haven't had the dairy milk. I haven't had the dairy milk for the vegan dairy milk yet. No, it's good. Is, is, it's is good. It good. It's good. But try an on bar. I'm telling you, I'm not. I am not a paid affiliate. Try oh, it. <laughs> on bar, yeah. If on bar yeah. want to, because I've been doing a lot of marketing work for them. But um, yeah, give it a go. Um, and when do you eat chocolate? Like, what, what, what's, you know? I don't, before I, before I was vegan, I used to eat it quite a lot. Mm. Now it's just, I don't know if it's because I'm getting older, uh, but every now, you know, every now and again, I'll treat myself. And, and it's not as easy to get either. Yes. So, like, you know, when you walk into the shop, you'll have, as you, before you pay, you'll see all the chocolates before yeah. you walk. I love that. It's hard as like, finding you know, a garage. It's the same for vegan stuff where there's loads of vegan things. I almost will eat more than what I do now, but it's one yeah. of those things. You have to go out your way to get yeah. to enjoy. So, but, I mean, is it like a late night thing for you or is it a kind of 11 o'clock in the morning? Ah, uh, no, oh, well, oh, 11 o'clock in the morning, but any time really, I don't really. But, it, uh, yeah, any, any time. <laughs> sure. chocolate is chocolate. yeah 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 no i hear what you're saying i hear what it you're saying it gives me that comforting, comforting kiss it's like oh yeah 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 it's but, very um, comforting yeah, stuff i mean uh, uh, there's there's a lot of sketchy chocolate out there there is you're absolutely right and i think you yeah, know yeah i mean some of it i put it in my mouth and just like, well this this i'm in poor i just can't eat it yeah, and I think I think there's been a lot of I, I think vegans now uh, rightly are are expecting something a little bit better. Uh, anyway, going back to that tiger prawn you were on, look, where did you okay. get that from? This sounds interesting. Oh yeah, well it was it was really it was I mean it was good. What's it um, made of as well? It's I think it was you know there's a few things um, made out of uh, konjac. You know that it's like a. Um, a starchy stuff from a, a kind of, I think it's like a kind of yam. It's like some kind of tubery thing. Right. Um, but this was quite early on. I think they're using that quite a lot now in fake meats, but they're mixing it with other proteins and stuff. On its own, it's quite rubbery. And it's got, it just had that, I got it in a, there's a Parisian supermarket that's all vegan which is sort of almost unthinkable really but but yeah it's 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 all catching on um and I bought them and I got them home and I fried them and when I bit into it it was almost like you know when you like bite the inside of your mouth yeah it had this kind of chomp thing that I was just like ah how you can that <laughs> <laughs> it's just too fleshy um yeah it was it was too kind of rubbery and and fleshy, but I think now, you know, a lot of the the the, the really clever sort of uh, burgers and stuff. I think they use a little bit of that for a bit of that texture, but then they kind of use other proteins and stuff to kind of right. make it more fully rounded and a bit. Sounds less, interesting. I like the one. Like a, bit to less, a bit less sort of octopusy. There's a lot of um, lot of experimenting, isn't it, going on with <coughs> vegan stuff at the moment? Oh yeah. Like you said, you know, everything's getting better and better. And, People I could ask you, would you, and stuff. would you, because you know, you're, you're a fan of the fake meats, would you eat the lab grown meat? Good question. I've seen it mentioned on like plant based news and all these kind of, yeah. kind of places. And the hardcore vegans going, no, I'll never do that. One. <clears throat> but I mean, I'd give it a go. Yeah. I'd give it a taste, see what it tastes like. Yeah. But um, I don't, I'm, I mean, it's not, they're not killing animals, are they? And that's... I don't think so. I'm guessing they just like biopsied a, a mole from a pig or something. Because I don't know where you get the original cells from. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I if, it's not harm, if it's not harming anybody, then I can't see. If it's not harming any animals, then I can't see. Yeah, yeah. I can't see any problem. I mean, each, when it comes to stuff like that, each their own. If it's, you know, if it's, sure. if it's not for you, it's not for you. And if you if you like it, happy days. But as you yeah. know, it's... It's not putting an animal through the slaughter, killing him, hacking his head off or whatever. Yeah. So um, I'm all I'm all good for it. Awesome. You haven't sort of moved too far away from that fleshy flesh feel then? Uh, I mean, no. Not, nah. I mean, well, I haven't had it for <laughs> ages, so I couldn't, really, I, I couldn't really tell you. So 
So it's just one of those things, and I mean, it'd be quite weird sticking <laughs> sticking real meat in your mouth for the first time since for all those years. Yeah, but uh, yeah, you know, just wait and see. You know, but I think go, moving into the future, the, this kind of stuff, I think that is going to be a massive. It's going to be a massive game changer for. I, yeah. I mean, I, I'm trying to look into the future, and I, and I can't see. The death of the, the mass slaughter of animals for meat, I don't think that stuff's going to be a thing. We're going to be looking at going, what, you used to eat them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but It feels pretty basic, doesn't it? It's a bit primitive, you know, eating animals, like braining animals and eating them. It just sort oh, of feels a bit... It just is... It's just, like, isn't that what we did in the... 1500s you know what so i mean in like the dark days i mean you, we, yeah. you know we've got supermarkets we've got plenty of food we don't need to eat we don't need to hack animals to death to feed us i mean we're, sure. you know we're all we're all prime examples that we're you know we haven't eaten, eaten animals or animal products for years and we're still fine fit healthy so wow. i think that says yeah. a lot for for veganism really i mean there's a lot of vegans out there who have terrible diets but i guess if you have a nice balanced diet Happy to represent. <laughs> Happy to represent. <laughs> you, you know, good. And it's, it's that classic, uh, or well, you're vegan, you're weak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. It's an interesting, I wanted to ask you about that, actually, because, you know, you, with your career and stuff, I mean, you, you were in a show called Balls of Steel. Yes. Which, you know, has a certain machismo uh, feel to it. And there's long been a sort of... Um, a stigma attached to, to veganism that it's you know real men you know take chunks out of cows when you moved to veganism did you meet any kind of uh derision for that i did get a lot of stuff online um it's the usual the usual stuff and that's it really but now i think just people people know that i am and i have been for years that it's not Nowhere near as bad. You still get the odd person every now and again, but yeah. it is what it is, and you just deal with it. Sure. Um, okay. What's what's next? Um, cheese. Oh yeah, come on! You've got every major food group here. This is perfect. Yeah, cheese. I mean, push. I mean, I wasn't. I'm not. Wasn't that art? like? I couldn't be vegan because I love cheese. No, oh, I yeah, wasn't. Yeah. That, I wasn't that person. I don't. I, I do. I did enjoy cheese, but I wasn't. I, I don't know why people can't live without cheese. I, I don't get it. But you know, that's well, them. it's it's addictive. We've we've gone into this before in the podcast. The yeah, casomorphine thing. Got, what's in it? The, casomorphine. That's it. Yeah. yeah, it is literally addictive. But I mean, I didn't. I enjoyed it, but it wasn't whatever. I I, I could go without it. So. It, again, it's one of those things that when you turn vegan, you you go on a mission to try and find that cheese you're gonna like. Whoa, what a what a journey that was! Yeah, some of them. Were, oh, I'm not naming names, but yeah, yeah, yeah. There, these, there were some it, yeah. bloody awful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, Did you ever try and make your own? Because I had a go at it. I haven't tried making my own, but I'd like to. Though, what did you make it out of cashews or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did the whole rejuvelac thing. Uh, which is so you know if you've been sprouting beans you know you know like when you make your own bean sprouts or yeah. whatever uh you know you keep the sprouts and throw away the water well that's all wrong it's that beautiful fizzy foamy water that you want that's the magic um that's the stuff that sort of then ferments within the cashews but it was it was it was terrible <laughs> it was really terrible <laughs> I'm so happy that all these big corporations have invested millions of R and D money into making me a nice camembert. After all this time of searching for stuff in supermarkets, and there's a lot of the stuff in supermarkets which is not very good, not up to much. It's just finding that perfect one that melts and all that kind of stuff. But I found applewood smoked yeah. in the supermarket, which I think is is my favourite. Yeah, because it goes. You can melt it on top of jack of potato cheese and beans, and you could just put it on top of pizzas and all that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, it never lets I mean, you down. I, when, when when I did dirty vegan, I, there's a shop run by two Welsh girls, 
it called La F- La Fromagerie. La Fromagerie, yeah. There's yeah, one in Brixton in London. Yeah, yeah. And they when we do a vegan, they, they they brought a selection of all their cheeses, and we just sat on the top of the mountain and just sat there eating all these different cheeses. It was some of them were absolutely unbelievable, really, really good. Even yeah. blue cheese and stuff, which is which was which is good. So I think if you go and buy cheeses from people like that with you know artisan cheeses and yeah. just really really good it's not mass produced like yeah. they are in the supermarket you can't really go wrong although some people find some of them a bit sketchy but there's a lot of them really really good but the stuff in the supermarket yeah but the apple wood boof tops it for me have you tried the cam blue made by mouse's favorite no try it it's fantastic. It's like a cross between a camembert and a blue cheese. It's almost like a kind of gorgonzola thing. Oh. And it's a thing of beauty. It's just one woman who makes this stuff. Uh, I went and visited her once. And she has like bales of cashews. I've never seen so many cashew nuts in my life. Um, and she just she makes them all by hand. And um, she had to sort of quite pioneering. She, she like traveled Europe, like begging uh, traditional uh, cheesemakers mm. for the bacillus, the actual bacteria that that generate um, blue cheese and, and camembert and stuff. And understandably, they were like, what do you want it for? She was like, I'd like to make a vegan version of your cheese. No, and they were not. like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so I've practically run out of the farm with a shotgun. But um, she, Some she did it. Some of penicillin, don't they? They inject it with penicillin. Oh, really? Yeah, Easy. to get the blue. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So um, she, she, yeah, it's it's a it's it's an absolute joy of a cheese. It's worth trying. Yeah, so, so great. I mean, I'd love to spend some time with people like that and learn how to do mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. Yeah, well, other be nice to just do it in your house and just uh, yeah, yeah. Because when yeah. you see the finished product, it's like poof. Don't yeah, so that. good. It was so like good. me last night with the lions. The lions made steaks for those. Uh, it was just I was over the moon. It was just tasted the best. I, I've got some more, and I think I might do them again tonight. Definitely, it's that great moment of unlocking where you feel like I just discovered the elixir of life. Like you, when you manage to make something yourself that you never thought you could, yeah. you're always going to have to buy it commercially. It's really exciting. First time I made Satan, I felt like that. Um, yeah, it is a. It is, okay. a good, it is a good one. So all cheese, but probably applewood. Um, what are you having next? Uh, well, I was, I, I, because of my, you know, I do a lot, of, a lot of endurance stuff and Ironmans and big challenges and all this kind of stuff. And this, this, well, not this year, because this, this, this year, this 2020, 2021, I managed to roll row across the Atlantic from Lanzarote to Antigua, oh uh, which took 52 days. Wow. And uh, it was th- there was four of us, me and another three guys on the boat, two hours on, two hours off. <clears throat> wow. And it was a meat-free boat. They were three vegetarians. I was vegan. So, you know, a lot of people, well, oh, you can't get across there. You, you know, vegan foods, you'll be weak, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, we had... Um, freeze-dried vegan meals uh, on board and you just put hot water and see them 50 minutes later they're rehydrated eat simple and amazing they, t- they taste absolutely delicious but then at the same time we had to make 50 um, snack packs which if uh, the others had like Mars bars and, and the gelatin you know sweets the gummies yeah, 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 animals yeah, yeah. and all that kind of stuff so I being the, being the vegan on the boat I, I went to my uh, Gareth to the, the health food shop and I got uh, dates, I got dried fruits, I got nuts, all that kind of stuff and to put in my snack bags. So the 50 snack bags were double bags, uh, freezer bags. Uh-huh. And I 50 of them there ready for the journey. I stuck them all into the locker. The, the boat was a brand new boat, stuck them all in the locker, locked them. And then uh, I, was, I put them in there a month ready for it to travel down to Lanzarote. Got on the water, started. I'll have a snack pack, opened the thing. Of course, it was so... The, the smell of epoxy, because the boat was so brand new. I wow. opened it up and I ate. I bought some some party ring, party ring biscuits. Party me. rings. Love a party ring. When I found out they were vegan, I was oh, like, oh, What a great day hallelujah. that was. Yeah. <laughs> but I had one. I went, what? Oh, oh. 
oh, oh. man, she literally eating epoxy glue. So I was like, sod it, man. Like, I'm going to have to, so I ate the whole lot. And then I, I was burping epoxy. And they were said, I thought, you better off. You can't, I wouldn't need that just in case you become ill and yeah. you know, in the middle of the sea. So I had to tip. Oh, I heartbreaking. Overboard. And I was like, damn, man, I haven't got any snack packs. And, you know, I needed to get as many calories as possible because I was, I had to put on two stone to get on the boat because the amount wow. of weight you're going to lose. Two so I, stone? I was 15, just over 15 and a half stone and normally 14. So I managed not falls two stone. Yeah. But then I got off the boat uh, under 13 stone. So anyway, my, all my stuff was gone. I'm like, I'm going to need time. Anyway, Billy, the skipper said, oh, I've got, um, what's it called? Cliff, cliff bars. Cliff bars sent me two big boxes of cliff bars for the trip. They're in the, the, this locker. I don't know if they're vegan or not. So I said, well, let's have a look. And they weren't, they weren't vegan. Uh, they, they were, they were vegan. Right. So I said, hey, never had them before. I ate them. Oh my God. What a taste sensation. I don't know if I was just because <laughs> I was hungry. And I was just so grateful for any calories. Really yeah. starving. I just thought anything will do, but I put it in my mouth. Oh, the texture, the flavor, everything about them. I so what are they like cereal bars? Yeah, like cereal bars, yeah, but they were, yeah. they were quite dense because they were full of calories uh, yeah. and everything. And that would that was it. I mean, I was, I couldn't stop eating the things because and I was starving. But that box didn't last very long because <laughs> I went <laughs> through them really quick. And it was and then I know Johnny, one of the one of the other row with us, he had them anyway in his snack packs. So towards the end of the row. We were, everyone had quite a lot, bit of food left over. So they were going through their snack packs and stuff. Johnny knowing that I didn't have any. So he sort of said, oh, there we are. And he, he just kept treating me with some <laughs> cliff bars every now and again. It was just a massive treat. So, yeah. So sort of imagine you as this sort of vegan pet for them. You know, you'd sort of sit up with your little pleading eyes. You know, beg for it, like, beg for like, it, like, roll like, over. Puppy, like, puppy eyes going, oh, is anyone going to feed bars of me? <laughs> But um, yeah, they were. So, uh, Cliff Bars has that become one of your all-time favourites? Yeah, especially when it comes to doing Jordan stuff. Yeah. Anything, sort of get that, get those calories, get that bit of energy into your yeah. body when you're when you're when you're running, cycling, swimming, whatever it may be. So, I would yeah. say that th that story is as close as we've actually come in the series to someone actually being on a desert island and having to choose their desert island food. I mean, you were literally floating around in the ocean. So oh, the, I I was, we were in the middle of for three weeks because it was lockdown as well. We were we were in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, and for three weeks we never saw not a thing. We didn't even see a boat. A boat didn't even come up on the radar. There was no planes, and wow. it was just the most peaceful place I think I've ever been in my whole life. And it was just I mean, and the weather was perfect. And it was just so peaceful. And then when, when it got dark, look up, you could see the whole, whole of the Milky Way, you, the stars. I can't even explain. It was just like nature's theatre, and you're rowing, just going, man, this is just this is just the best. And it was warm as well. You just had t-shirts, pair of shorts on. I felt like Robinson Crusoe and beard out there. It was just nice. amazing. Because I think you know, it's one of those experiences that could probably go one of two ways you know there are some people who thrill to that sort of solitude i guess you know and and being uh, alone with the elements and and some people who i think would find it quite disconcerting yeah i mean i i felt, <laughs> felt really at home to be honest with you I, the noise of land sort of does my head in but when i when, when i was on that boat and just surrounded by that piece of this just yeah I absolutely loved it. It was amazing. Sounds incredible. And and they'll get all those vegan meals. Got us across the uh, got us across the ocean. So for everyone out there who thinks vegan food will make you weak, then you can think again because it doesn't. There you go. You have empiric proof. Well, um, thank you so much. Uh, for uh, sharing your, your foods with us. We've got mushrooms, the fake meats, the chocolate, applewood cheese and cliff bars. As far as I can see, they're all really unhealthy. <laughs> <laughs> food really, if at 
all the time in moderation sure. really good but i i do i just i know i love fruits i love vegetables in general potatoes come on who doesn't like potatoes and the, yeah. m- the amount of things you can cook with potatoes and the different yeah. things you can do with them i saw quite a good card actually yesterday which said um you can use potatoes to make chips crisps and vodka it's like the other vegetables aren't even trying <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was pretty, pretty good. Oh, yeah. I mean, mashed potato. Who doesn't like mashed potato? Oh. Mashed potato. Because you can get that. You can get vegan butter now. Salted vegan butter, which is, f- as far as I'm concerned, this is just it is the real stuff. F- whack that in there. A bit of some scallions. Oh, oh come man. on. Just come on. plenty of salt, plenty of pepper. Love it. It's, that's the biggest comforting kiss you could have. I feel like, you know, you, you can tell that you're someone who is really active physically because I feel like almost all the foods you've chosen are things where it's like, I need to load some energy on now. Um, so it's... it's but then I, you know, I, well, this morning, I did a half marathon this morning. I'm kind of, sure, why not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had a cry on the loo. I mean, come on, same. But uh, it's just... <laughs> You know, when you burn when you're burning calories, you need to put it back in. So, you know, so it's just, that's what it is, isn't it? Yeah, it's exactly that. Burn it off, put it back. Burn yeah. it off, put it back. Burn it off, put it back. Well, it's been an absolute joy to learn about the foods you love. Thanks so much for sharing them with us. Thanks for having me, man. Um, where where should people go to find your stuff? What's the stuff that you know? You, uh, you can get? follow me on uh, Pritchard S W I D on Instagram. Uh, the same with uh, my YouTube channel. Same with everything, really, Pritchard, SWID. So just go check it out. And uh, my website's about to go live very soon, matthewpritchard.com, and that's it. Don't forget uh, that Vegan Life magazine is, uh, well, it's available in shops and also online at veganlifemag.com. Uh, we've got some social media stuff. It's vegan life underscore podcast. I'm just hitting you with information at far too high a rate. I don't even know how my brain managed to do that. Uh, if you've got a question about vegan food you've always wanted to ask, you can email podcast at veganlifemag.com. Uh, normally in the podcast, we have uh, chefs on and we ask them questions about vegan cooking. And it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. You should, you should check it out. Um, in the meantime, thanks very much for being here my name is jake cap and i'll hopefully see you in the next show bye this has been a swanburst media production